Hello and welcome everyone to the first Rocksmith developer stream of 2021. Uh, it feels like it's been uh, months since I've seen you all last, uh, but it's been a month. It's been a while. I'm um, glad to be back. Uh, glad to be back here with all of you. Uh, if this is your first time watching the Rocksmith developer stream, maybe you, uh, maybe you or someone, uh, maybe you picked up Rocksmith or someone picked it up for you and you're like, what is this all about? What do they do? Uh, we have this stream uh, currently once every couple of weeks. Uh, we like to talk about music. Uh, we like to listen to songs uh, from the library, uh, watch people from the community play those songs. Uh, and we usually have some, some, some educational or entertaining uh, segments from our staff at Rocksmith. Today, uh, to talk, I have two of our staff. Uh, what we're gonna talk about, sometimes I uh, like to go into theory, sometimes like to go into technique. Today, we're gonna go a little bit more uh, abstract, a little bit more sort of high level uh, with music, and I wanna talk about goals. I uh, figured it was appropriate since uh, maybe you set some uh, uh, some 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 goals, some New Year's resolutions. Uh, maybe you're still following through. Maybe you gave up. Uh, doesn't really matter to me right now. We're going to talk about setting some musical goals and uh, how you can track track those, keep them going. And to discuss your musical goals, uh, I have uh, Leila Abdul Rauf and Shane Gann. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and while while you're uh, while you're loading up here, I uh, want to say that UB Jurassic, that's Brian Turner. He is in the chat. Uh, he is going to help moderate. So if you have questions for me or for our guests, uh, Layla and Shane, uh, hit up UB Jurassic in the chat. He'll get your questions to us uh, and we can answer those throughout the stream. Uh, and he'll also be taking care of a, a giveaway that's going to come uh, a little bit later. Uh, so, yeah, welcome, Layla and Shane. How's it going? Hey, Dan. Um, <laughs> uh, for for people who may be uh, watching for the first time, uh, starting with Layla, do you want to introduce yourselves uh, and let people know where they may have heard you from if they listen to music? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Layla Abdul Rauf, um, Ubisoft. I'm a music uh, content creator, um, uh, and I also uh, play guitar and sing in. Um, Two metal bands, Vastum and Hammers and Misfortune. Um, I also compose uh, ambient music under my own name, and I have an electronic trio, Ionophore. Um, and those last two, um, I'm working on some releases. So. Nice, perfect. That'll be, that'll be good. <laughs> that's <the> short version. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Shane. Uh, I'm Shane Gann. I uh, have been with Ubisoft since 2012, um, except for some stints where I was touring with my band Hail the Sun. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been working uh, as a note tracker, so a transcriptionist, level design, um, and yeah, just being super involved with the uh, the team for that whole time, even in my off, off time, I've used to work from the road and all of that. And I just want to say, I, I went through the Vastum uh, discography like a month or two months ago the whole thing and it your band is awesome <laughs> oh thanks so much yeah <laughs> cool uh so yeah i wanted to talk about goals um uh ba basically uh yeah somebody somebody who's playing guitar and if, if you're playing guitar and you just you just want to play guitar and have fun uh i've said this before uh, that is a completely fine way, completely acceptable, completely lovely way, in fact, to spend your time uh, with an instrument, with music. Um, but if you you have something that you want to uh, 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 accomplish um, outside of that, uh, that's what this conversation is here for. So first, I want to talk about just establishing a goal, kind of identifying what it is that you want to do with your music. And this can be this can be short term, this can be long term, this can be a small project, it can be a big project. Uh, so from from just nailing a solo or, or, or memorizing a song to uh, releasing an album or setting up a tour, uh, how do you to, uh, and we'll, we'll start with Shane this time, uh, how do you tend to just identify what it is exactly that you want to do and put that into words or uh, a, a, a purpose that you can aim towards? Well, first I should say, you know, when, when Doug, when you approached me for having this conversation about having this conversation, I, uh, I was super eager to have this talk with you guys because I'm not naturally very good at setting goals. Um, <laughs> I come from a background of like overflowing my plate and like eating little pieces of everything 
And um, so I've actually spent the better part of this entire quarantine really like intently studying this whole process of identifying a goal and figuring out how to achieve it. And so I would say um, one of the things that I've really walked away with um, is to start with uh, why you're, why you want to learn the thing, why your intention, your intention for the goal in the first place, what is it your, you know, your purpose is for the goal. And from there, you can actually, it becomes a little clearer as to what um, individual steps or in the smaller chunked goals that you can find that will work towards, because there's so many different ways to go about every, everything. So are you, are you able to give us an example, Shane? Uh, so for example, I, I, um, I guess I would say some of, some of the goals I've had in the past have been really broad. Like, I just want to work on this technique. I just want to work on this technique. I just want to be better at this technique. And at the end of the day, it's like, why do I want to be good at that technique? I want to be able to, for me, it's, I want to be able to translate the things that I hear in my head onto my instrument. So then that gives me more of an idea like, okay, well, why don't I just go find a specific example where this technique already exists? Why don't I just drill that? Or why don't I, you know, there's something a little more specific that stems from my sort of underlying reasoning. Uh, Layla, how, how do you tend to sort of identify your goals and, and set that initial target? Well, I think it's always good to start small, uh, especially if something's new. Um, start with something that's really realistic. Um, you know, like, um, you know, you want to learn whether you want to learn a specific guitar technique or you want to, you know, set practice goals, like, like I'm going to practice, it could be really, really simple. Like, um, I'm going to practice guitar, uh, every day for 20 minutes or something really, you know, 20 minutes goes by like nothing. Um, you know, and then and then if you do, uh, if you are more ambitious and want to do something that's more involved, I still think it's important to take that larger goal. Say, like, I want to record an album. Um, yeah. To take the small steps so you don't get overwhelmed and don't, you know, then you don't end up, uh, you, you, get, you get overwhelmed, you don't... Um, you lose the drive to accomplish what you want to. So, so if you if you are starting, if you sort of identify and establish something that is a bit ambitious, uh, like releasing an album, uh, how do you tend to go about breaking that down into 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 those bite sized sort of more achievable chunks? What what are your processes for that? Well, it depends on the project. Um, if you're working with a band. Um, versus a, a solo project, um, you, know, you want to maybe assign people certain tasks, like who's gonna who's gonna write the songs, how how are you gonna go about, uh, you know, writing them, and uh, how how much time do you have? That's that's another uh, important thing. Um, is this something you're trying to like? get done in a year or three months, you know, you'll, you might have a different plan depending on, on your timeline. And, um, and there's all sorts of steps that go into making an album, as I'm sure Shane knows very well, um, from, you know, the writing, like who's going to do the recording? Are you going to record yourself? Are you going to hire an engineer to do that? What kind of budget are you working with? Um, you know, who's going to do the cover art? Uh, how are you going to promote the album? Are you going to um, uh, shop for a label to release it? Or are you going so these are just examples of all the little steps involved in the big in the big uh, goal of putting out an album. Uh, Shane, just as an example. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say. Uh, Basically, another thing that I've I've really that's really hit close to home, and I've been really trying to incorporate constantly, is to work backwards from that end result of I want to have an album out, and so 
if you can sort of picture what it looks like the day the album comes out and think about everything that went into that day from like sort of stepping backwards from there, you know, you're going to run into all of these issues that, or all of these topics that Layla just brought up, you know, you're going to be like, okay, well, what does it look like? I need an artist. How does it sound? I need an engineer who like everything kind of, hopefully you can, you know, sort of build a roadmap. Um, and, you know, if you're pretty good about your time management or, you know, just um, estimating, the amount of time sure. needed for these different steps and the amount of work that goes into it, you know, the different types of personnel that are involved. Um, ideally, you'll be able to put together a, a fairly realistic roadmap off the bat. And obviously, you're still going to run into unforeseen obstacles. But um, yeah, you'll have that groundwork laid out so that you know that you're at least walking in the right direction. So when you're when you are laying these out, when you're laying out these plans, how much of this is actually are you actually putting into into writing in some form or it, some sort of I permanent? Feel like I, I have to write down everything these days. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, if I don't, it gets lost. And, you know, I try and remember, like, what was that thing I remembered or I thought that I needed to do? And then it's just there's nothing. There's nothing in there. Your working right. memory doesn't have enough spots for it. So. Uh, is that the same for you? <laughs> is that the same for you, Layla? Oh, yeah. Um, well, mm, yeah, in terms of just like documenting right away what you're doing, because you'll just forget it. Like, like if I'm if I have a riff in my head, I got to pick up the guitar right then and there, get the uh, voice recorder on my phone on. And, you know, just because it's right there, it's simple. You don't have to like dig into your computer um, and just just play it. And, yeah. you know, and you have it. So that's that's a good habit to get into is to just record yourself, even with the most simple tools that are available. Yeah, I think uh, uh, with with what Shane was saying, I've I've also found that historically I've trusted myself too much as far as remembering what it is that I want to do and how I want to get there. Uh, so I, I, I've I've. I don't know. At some point, I convinced myself that I was too smart to need to write things down, and that's not—that's <laughs> apparently not the case. And it's not a matter of smart. It's just there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the world right now. There's a lot probably going on in in your lives, uh, especially if you're you're trying to make these plans. So write it down. Uh, if you're working on a song uh, and you, you want to get that practice in uh, in 20 minutes a day, say you have a weekend that for whatever reason you're not able to, next Monday might come. You might just forget that you've been doing that. And then, uh, then you have to kind of not restart, uh, but you have to be able to, I guess, forgive yourself and be like, it's okay that I, I missed a day or two. Let's just get back on it and get back to work with it. Um, so yeah, uh, how do you deal normally? And I, I realize that this this question is very very broad, uh, but when you have these plans, uh, if something does go sideways, uh, a new complication comes up. Uh, how do you tend to work around that within the plan that you've laid out? Um, I I think it's okay to um, not beat yourself up when something doesn't work out. And it's okay to change the goal or to make it smaller than, you know, or, or if something's just not realistic, like during quarantine, there's just so much that's not going to happen right now. And just like you said, forgive yourself and, and allow yourself to make changes. Um, you know, do, do something that's working toward that, but, you know, uh, you'll get there eventually, but, um, you know, you have to start somewhere. So it's, it's okay to change. Shane. Yeah. I'm actually reminded of, um, Again, when you brought this topic up, it reminded me of a previous stream that happened. I looked it up. It, it was the September 3rd stream of last year with Sam Schwartz and Andrew Levin. And Sam talked one time. He mentioned um, he had this goal of doing 100 pull-ups. Right. And then he sort of was like, I'm not going to be able to do 100 pull-ups. And you can't let that that daunting larger goal get in the way of just saying, okay, well then why don't I just aim for 10? And then once you have 10, why don't I aim for 20? Why don't I aim for, you know, it's, it's really stepwise. Yeah. You have to really be again, yeah. forgiving of your process and, and yeah, just go easy on yourself and, and let yourself struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Especially, especially if it's something that you're doing kind of for yourself. 
Yes. Like uh, early early on in the conversation, I, I was talking about you know uh, players who maybe you know they they don't they don't ever want to play in front of other people. They don't ever want to necessarily write a song, but you can always challenge yourself, even if it's just you and your your PC or your console and your guitar, or just you and your guitar. Uh, setting goal, achieving goals, uh, feels good. It turns out, <laughs> like being able to say I want to do this thing, and then spending some time with it. And doing the thing, it feels good. It and it's you know it can make you feel, especially uh, right now, uh, if you are sort of stuck at home, uh, if you don't have the the sort of social or otherwise you know other escapes that you might have, uh, being able to achieve something that you want to do uh, in your home uh, is feels good. It's nice. Uh, so how do you know? If perhaps uh, you've made a mistake, uh, if you need to pivot your goal uh, or abandon ship, like how do you know when you've reached that point? Or should you ever feel like you've reached that point? That's a tough question. It's a, it's a bonus question. <laughs> I, I feel like, um, again, if I started with why I wanted to achieve the thing in the first place, I try and avoid abandoning ship completely mm -hmm. unless, you know, obviously priority comes into play and, you know, different things happen in your life and shift has to happen. But in general, I think it's more important to just sort of, if you really do believe in your goal, it's important to just scale it down for the amount of time that the priority has to be lowered and don't give it up completely because momentum is super important regardless. Right. So um shift is going to happen yeah um redirection and all of that is going to happen but try your best to um you know keep pushing towards the goal if you can and uh Layla yeah I think it's it's okay uh to shift gears if something's not working I mean uh what's that Einstein quote insanity is doing the same thing over and over and um expecting a different result yeah um yeah, and so that's that's definitely um, the case here. And you know, it we should definitely, uh, you know, like Shane said, keep keep that goal in mind. You know, you don't have to abandon it altogether. Um, but if something's not working, you have to be honest with yourself and and say it's not working, and and make a different plan, and also trust that that different thing is going to work just as well, if not better than what you originally, uh, your original course of action was gonna be. Yeah, and uh, are you, so as you make these changes, as you sort of tick off the the smaller sections of these goals, uh, are, are you, do you tend to, to track or monitor your, your progress? Uh, or, or does that sort of just sort of come naturally? Like, so I know I'm sure as you're, you're building an album, uh, you know, as the pieces fall into place, it, the song itself is sort of a record of its creation, uh, but if it's something that's a little bit less uh, straightforward in that regard, if it's a bit something that's maybe a bit more uh, ethereal, uh, do you tend to track your progress, and how so? Uh, yeah, I um, I think tracking progress it it depends on what project I'm working on. Like um, like if you're recording stuff at home and you're working with other collaborators that are also uh, wor you know, working from your computer, et cetera, and you're not in a live room, which most people are not right now. Um, it's, it, I think it's even more important to keep track um, through some kind of document. Um, like Ionophore, we use Google Sheets and you know, there's only one location you can check that has the correct last version of the song that you're working on. So there's no confusion. Um, that's just a small example of, of how to keep track of your progress. Um, you know, have have a column that says this, you know, the, these are uh, these are the th things we've done. This is what still needs to happen. And and again, assigning people tasks um, in, in, in the band so that you don't have one person doing all the work. Uh, do you uh, when you're when you're doing solo projects do you sort of 
do you ever assign yourself tasks? I mean, I, I guess that would be the sort of breaking down of your your goals, of your objectives. But do you ever just write down, okay, so in order to do, in order to finish this song, uh, uh, there's there's a sound that I need, so I need to remind myself to go collect or create this this sound or this texture. I find that I don't really do that with my solo project. It's so much more in the moment and spontaneous that sure. Um, although, yeah, like if I have a if I have like a title, sometimes the title or the cover art idea will come oh, from. Yeah. And I will write those ideas down um, before I start getting to work and, and recording and all that. Um, whereas the music is more like this spontaneous in the moment. Uh, whatever I lay down in that moment is going to be the foundation of the song. And I'm just going to keep building from there. Right. Uh, and, and I do want to ask the chat right now, if you, all, if you all have set or are right now setting some musical goals for yourselves uh, for the next year, the next month, the, the rest of this week, uh, let us know what you're working on. Uh, I'd love to, to talk about what you've got going on uh, with your, your musical ambitions at the moment. Uh, Shane, uh, yeah, do you, do you tend to track your progress in a Currently, at least now that you've kind of gone through this this uh, uh, goal based uh, deep dive, deep dive, yeah, yeah. Have you are are you finding a a specific uh, methodology or certain tools that are helping you track your progress? Yeah, the one of the huge um, it's kind of a mainstay in the goal setting realm is this. Um, it's called the SMART goal system. S M A R T. And it stands for specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic, and then time-based. And it's definitely worth a Google or watching a YouTube video about it um, because they it kind of ticks those boxes. And, and that second, um, the M is measurable. And if you can't measure it, you can't really see how things are progressing. And, you know, for an album, it's having that checklist of, okay, we've done bass for this song. We still have this many songs to do bass for. That's super helpful. But for, like you were saying, more ethereal goals or uh, more personal goals, um, I, I have to track just time. Time is really all it ends up being. You know, did I put in only 20 minutes working towards this thing this week or did I get, you know, two to five hours of sure. this time? And all of that includes those obstacles, you know, you're going to run into, I don't know how to make that sound. Um, I, I have to look some stuff up, but that that's that time you're putting in. So that's what I track. That's the only thing that really um, works for me. I think uh, that that leads me well to a uh, uh, next question. Uh, I was going to ask how you know when you are done, how you know when you've completed the goal. And a, a lot of things, you know, it'll be pretty self, uh, it'll, it'll reveal itself when it's done, right? But when you're working on uh, something artistic, when you're working on a song, you can keep you can keep tweaking it. You can keep working on it indefinitely. Uh, so with music specifically or with with art specifically, uh, is it time? Is that how you know when you've done when you've done? Like if you do you set aside, I'm going to work on this until like this deadline and then use what I've got to assemble the, the final or how do you how do you know when you're done? Uh, for me, yeah, like you just said, deadlines have been this, again, not very natural thing for me, but sure. <laughs> I've actually adopted that. That's come from watching a lot of competitive cooking shows like um, yeah, and Great British Baking Show. And what, what I find really fascinating is that, you know, like you said, with these artistic endeavors, there really isn't an end point. You know, you can kind of tweak things ad nauseum. Um, but when the clock is actually ticking against you, you the the competitors are forced to you know just do what they know how to do within that time limit and whether or not that's really pushing the envelope or playing it safe there's that wiggle room but eventually you know the ones that really succeed and win these competitions are the ones who sort of fit right in the middle of you know just doing what they do well and deadlines for me have been kind of that's like my current challenge right now is like forcing myself to give myself only this amount of time and when i when that buzzer goes off i'm like okay well i'm not going to touch that for a while and sure. 
you know, if I revisit it and I see blaring things that need to be addressed, maybe I will at that point. But um, it, yeah, the cutoff is really important. I assume I assume that happens. That sort of becomes its own new sort of project, right? right? Like fi like fixing this, fixing this thing is the new goal. Exactly. Uh, it's not just an extension. Uh, Layla, what about yourself? How do you know? How do you know when you're done with a project that is uh, artistic in nature? Yeah, I, I'll use a album recording as an example. I mean, there's all sorts of examples, but um, for me, it's just like this feeling in my body. I listen back to it and I'm like, yes. That's the one. <laughs> um, and if I don't have that feeling, I know I'm not done. And it could take hours, it could take months, it could take years. Um, if I don't have that feeling of, yes, this is it, or, or something's making me feel weird or something's not sitting right, I know my work isn't done. So that's, it's a very sort of visceral approach, but. But that's, but that's you, that's you having spent time and you knowing your product, you knowing your craft and, and when it sounds like what it's supposed to sound like for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you're working with a band, you all have to agree. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah, how, then, how, how does that tend to change? Like, uh, it, it, how does that tend to change? Like, what if you think, and this, this is for both of you, what if you think we're done here, we've got, we've got the song, but then somebody else in the band, uh, I don't like the lead part. Sorry, Shane. We got <laughs> Uh, so yeah, how, how, how is that resolved typically, uh, in your experience, uh, with a group setting? Uh, personally group dynamics are, yeah, just, it's a different process because you, there's a lot more, um, uh, compromise that goes into it. And, you know, you have these other people who have different tastes and like Layla said, a lot of this, um, your goal really is that feeling of being done and you're, you might feel like you're there and somebody else feels like you're not even close. And so, yeah, if obviously, you know, conversation and every, all the, all the um, mainstays that go into relationships, like uh, communication and patience and compromise are super important, but um, definitely um, it in, in some ways is easier to get to that end result because sometimes I'll be like, I don't know, this song sucks, you guys. And everybody else is like, what are you talking about? I love it. <laughs> and then it comes out and people love it. And I, I just And that's the single. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sometimes your your own um, idea of what you want something to be holds you back hold you back from letting it just be done a lot of times. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Uh, while you guys are here, let's let's uh, let's go over some of the goals that the people in the chat have set. Uh, Ted's Racksmith videos, uh, our performer for the day, uh, says I think one of my goals is to one play more my acoustic because two I want to focus on more of those. Oh yeah, I can play this. Listen to this moments and just twang it out. Uh, next can gaming uh, wants to learn play guitar. Uh, we might have some suggestions here. Stick around. Uh, S Max uh, says passing Tesla modern day cowboy on hard. There you go. Uh, my Noah 16, uh, who was on uh, December, I believe, uh, got my New Year's resolution to make an album, have one song done, and 100 ideas to sort through. Plenty of time at home to work on it. Uh, wish you luck on getting that album together. Can't wait to hear it. Uh, is that going to be acoustic, I wonder? Uh, and then the Lady February says, my goal this year is to expand on what I started last year, learn how to play bass well. Uh, yeah, all of these sound pretty great to me. Um, and I think we are just about wrapped up here. Uh, before we go uh, in this this conversation about sort of establishing, monitoring, and completing these goals, is there any other advice, any other uh, avenues or suggestions you would like to make? Or have we have we covered it? <laughs> we went pretty in depth. The only thing, other thing I can think of is sometimes it's more more important or equally important to recognize things that are in your life that are, you know, automatically creating friction towards your goal. Like, you know, I really, I, during the week, I have to uninstall certain video games. Otherwise, sure. 
my evening is just gone. Um, so uh, yeah, that's another one is is sort of looking at the opposite side of goals. Set boundaries. Yes. Good. Set yourself up for success. Yes. Is this <laughs> Layla? Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to uh, push yourself further. Um, if uh, if if you find the uh, the bandwidth and energy to do that. Um, and trust yourself, trust your voice, your inner voice. Um, just because someone's telling you, you can't do something, uh, don't, don't listen to them and, um, and you'll find yourself one day proving them wrong. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, and it does remind me of one more thing I wanted to ask, uh, in, in this, this process. Uh, once you've identified that you are complete, what's next? What do you do? What do you do with whatever you've created or accomplished? Or what do you do with yourself now that you've completed that goal? Uh, I guess, uh, well, for me, I, I usually have to have some sort of a follow up, you know, before I even reach the finish line. I have to know what this is sort of moving into. Otherwise, sure. you know, I might feel like I accomplished it. I might reward myself, and that's important too. You do want to reward yourself, but then all that momentum might be out the window if you're not like, okay, what do I want to keep doing with this? Um, yeah, just having that next step in mind. Another, even if it's like a mini, like, you know, I finished a song, I want to show people. Let's send it to yeah. some people, get some feedback. That's enough. Yeah, yeah. And Layla? Yeah, totally. I, I, Shane gave some really good advice there. And um, it could be you want to um, move on to the next thing. You have the momentum. Keep going. Or you might be exhausted and you need a break. Take a break. Um, <laughs> I've had, you know, Vastum's taken a break. You know, we, we, we would take like, you know, a six-month hiatus after recording an album sometime. And we come back even stronger after that. So, yeah. um, so it just depends. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much for being here today, joining us for the uh, the first stream of 2021. That's uh, that's one of the bag, uh, and it is now time uh, uh, we're going to say goodbye to Shane and Layla. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again very soon. Now uh, we are going to hear from our community guest uh, for the day. Uh, this is Ted from uh, uh, PC Gaming. Is Ted slash Ted's Rocksmith videos. Uh, he does videos. He does uh, playthroughs. Uh, from music from Rocksmith. Uh, he also does videos sort of about the library, uh, kind of deep dives into ideas. Uh, really interesting to check him out. He's in the chat right now. Uh, give him a follow. Uh, and after we hear from Ted, uh, we're going to hear from our own Sam Schwartz about how you know when it might be time to get a new guitar. Thank you once more, uh, Layla and Shane. We'll see you very soon. Uh, and everyone else in the chat will be back live uh, in just a few minutes. Hey, everyone. Happy New Year. I hope you all had a restful break with whatever you ended up doing. I actually spent my first Christmas alone in my flat, which was strange. Although I say alone, there's always the voices in my head to keep you company, isn't there? Anyway, it's great to be back, and what better way to get started than by helping out on the first stream of the new year. Before I get to playing, I'd just like to say that I'm really excited to fill this new year with even more guitar learning than Rocksmith playing. I feel it's probably important to say that I basically got to my skill level entirely due to Rocksmith, so what you're about to see is a real testament to the game and what the developers created. I feel that if you're a new or even an old player, just keep playing Rocksmith because it really helps. I've got two songs to play for you today, the first of which is Slow Hands by Interpol. Now this was an on-disc song for Rocksmith 1 which you can import into Rocksmith Remastered. You might be asking, how the heck did you manage that? Well don't worry, because we have a guide on the riff repeater to help you import this and 51 other songs and if you haven't imported yet, you really should get on that. And if you like what you're about to see, don't forget that Interpol already have a packing game. Enjoy.
flawless performance. Hello, wonderful Rocksmith people. My name is Sam Schwartz. I am uh, back again with another video. And today I kind of wanted to talk about um, a little bit about why we all want to have a million bajillion guitars uh, and what you can do to figure out whether you need a guitar or uh, whether the guitar that you are playing right now is the one that you really want to be using for certain things or if uh, you can replace it or if you really do need another guitar to do something else. So I want to talk about all those things today uh, and more and then I'll do some playing and you guys can tell me what you think. So let's get started. Okay, so before we do any playing here, I want to talk about one of my favorite guitar players ever, and his name is Brent Mason, right? And if you don't know about Brent Mason, check out Brent Mason, because Brent Mason is uh, like sort of the master of the Telecaster, right? If, you, if you've heard a country record in the last 25, 30, maybe even 40 years, there's a good chance that you heard him playing on it um, because he is one of those A-list guys in Nashville, right? So, um, and he... At a certain time in his his career, before it took off, before he was Mr. Session Guy, he was broke. He didn't have a lot of money. And he used one guitar to make it all happen, and it was his Telecaster. Um, and he took a Telecaster and he put a mini humbucker in the neck pickup, and then he put a, a stacked uh, bridge pickup in the bridge to get that sort of Nashville country sound. And then he put a middle pickup in there that he could bleed in as much as he wanted. Um, and it gave him sort of somewhere between like, if you wanted a really jazzy tone, you would go to that neck pickup and get that mini hum sound. If you wanted that real country bite, that real harsh, like Nashville chicken picking thing, he would go to that bridge pickup and then he could bleed in the middle pickup, um, of his, uh, of, of his Telecaster that sort of acted like a strap pickup in a certain way. So he would kind of, for lack of a better term, bleed in the stratness, um, and it made it so that he had one guitar that really could cover a lot of bases without having to own or bring five guitars to different things. Um, and a lot of players talk about this kind of conundrum that they have. Uh, I, I've actually heard Ben Yunsen talk about this is why he plays a Stratocaster because he would have to go from rock gig to jazz gig to uh, to funk gig to you know you know whatever, and and he'd have to have a guitar that really did all those things really well. So. Um, I have a litany of guitars here. Um, I kind of did similar things to my Telecaster that Brent Mason did to his, although I didn't put the middle pickup in mine. Um, but I wanted to show you how those things sounded and why I, like how I think about buying a new guitar and when I think it's a good time and how I sort of weigh those decisions. Um, because I think that could be a helpful thing for people in the Rocksmith community to be like, when do I need a new guitar? Or is, 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 uh, or, or when is it okay to buy a new guitar, right? Or um, can I, like, is this a good investment for me? Um, and not necessarily is this a good investment, um, like if you're always thinking about it, like a, you know, a return on your investment, but sometimes it's uh, it's really nice to just have a guitar that really uh, does something for you and brings out an element of your playing that otherwise wasn't bring, uh, wasn't being brought, brought out of your playing. Um and uh, that's what I think you should be focusing on when buying a new guitar. So I can show you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about with the guitars that I'm going to do a little solo over, uh, just to, like a little quick riff I recorded. So you guys can kind of check out how these guitars bring out certain elements of my playing where you can hear how I sound like me over all three guitars, you know, spanning the, the, the three guitars that I'm going to be using, but also how they bring out different elements of my playing because of not just how I, uh, like what they are with the pickups and the setup in the wood, but, but also just how, uh, they feel to me what they, you know, having nines on my Telecaster and knowing that it's a Telecaster makes me want to do little, uh, telecastery type pre pre bends and pedal steel things. And then my, my key soul makes me want to do real destroyer type rock shredding. Cause it kind of makes me feel like Zach wild when I have that thing in my hand. And then my Stratocaster makes me want to, you know, sort of fit into to things a little bit better because it's, it's just a little bit more of a guitar that kind of does everything. And it's a Stratocaster and people know it, right? It's a little bit more of a familiar uh, sound to people and it's not as abrasive. So you can really get a lot of different things going on. So without further ado, let me introduce you to some guitars. Okay, so this is my G&L, so you can see right there, my G&L Legacy Stratocaster. I bought this really cheap, actually, um, 
And I just, I love it because it's got this like, I mean, it's just single coil pickups. I'm on the second position here, you can see, uh, or maybe you can't, there you go, you can see that. Um, but let me just play a little bit for you. And the thing I love about this guitar the most is the trim bar. It just got such a great, it just sounds so good when I do. such a great sound and I love how it digs that out of my playing that I can't necessarily do on another type of guitar. So um, without further ado, I'm going to play my uh, rock solo here. Hey folks, all right, so that was my Stratocaster and you can kind of hear how I was playing with the whammy bar and really taking advantage of that single coil pickup sound, that woo woo sort of uh, stuff that I could do when I'm bending. I, could, I really got into that uh, a little too much for some people, if you ask them. Uh, but um, I thought uh, it would be nice to bring out this Tele next. So this is the Tele that is sort of based on Brent Mason's Tele. This is a Mexican uh, Tele that I stripped the, the cellulose, the nitrocellulose off, and um, I just did a little bit of a finish on it. It looks kind of raw. I think it looks cool, some people don't like it, but I really love the way this thing looks. And the maple neck on this thing, man, just rips. And so, um, you know, this is the, normally I use this for like uh, country gigs and um, when I'm playing like new caster stuff, uh, you know, as it's called sometimes. Um, so this kind of, you know. <laughs> You can kind of see me doing some hybrid pick of you. know, that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's see how it sounds on a rock solo. So as you can see, that telly makes me play a little bit more like with pre-bends and uh, just different kinds of things that um, I otherwise wouldn't usually play with, right? Like I'm not, my strings are not that light on my Stratocaster. So I can't do those kinds of bends and move quite as fast or fluidly as I can on my Telecaster uh, for that kind of stuff. So. Um, what I have now is this monster Kiesel uh, SCB6, and I custom ordered it from them, and it was it was pricey and uh, worth it for me because uh, it's exactly it's exactly the kind of guitar that I'm looking for uh, for the kind of things that I use it for. Um, so it's it's got a killer rock sound. This bridge pickup, man, it just kicks. <laughs> And I have it in D standard because to me, 
Um, I feel like this guitar just sounds better in D standard. You get this like, that honking sound that you get on that bridge pickup. It just, it just kills in, in D standard, man. And everything just feels really good. Um, so without further ado, let's do a little rock solo with this guy. Okay, so you can hear with the Kiesel, I went like turn it up to 19 and a half, right? I wanted to go like with all the tapping licks and everything else. It just felt more visceral and uh, I just, that guitar just, <laughs> every time I play it, it makes me want to destroy. I want to take over the world when I play that guitar. Uh, it's just so powerful. Um, and so, um, you know, in summary, you can kind of hear how those different guitars, even though I'm the same player, it's the same tone. Um, you know, I, I, I adjusted my input levels a little bit, but not much. Um, and so you're basically getting the same, everything going into the machine, into the recording uh, is, is basically the same, right? Um, the only real difference is the guitars that I'm playing. Um, and you can really hear how those different guitars affect how I play them, even if I'm kind of trying to achieve a similar thing. You can really hear how they, uh, they bring different things out in my playing. And so when you guys are looking for different guitars um, and you're thinking, maybe I need to buy something else or do I need this guitar anymore or whatever, um, I recommend that you really think about what the guitar that you're looking at, whether it is to, to get rid of it or if it's to get a new one, what is that guitar really doing for you? Is it bringing something out in your playing that other guitars in your arsenal don't really bring out? Um, is it inspiring you to play just by the means of it being there? Um, is it is it bringing something out in you that you didn't know you had? You know, um, Those are things that, um, that I really love about my guitars is they bring out different parts of who I am as a player uh, and as a person, but, but definitely as a player. And, and a lot of techniques that I would have otherwise never tried to get good at or, or, or dig my teeth into, um, I find myself uh, digging into on different guitars because they speak to me and my playing in a certain way. Um, and I really want you guys to have that same experience when you guys are looking for guitars and thinking about buying guitars or um, whether or not you have too many guitars, right? Because um, on the flip side of that, I had a guitar that um, kind of did what the Ibanez did, but not quite as well. Uh, or Sorry, not the Ibanez, my, uh, <laughs> my Kiesel. So I had a guitar that uh, did what my Kiesel does. Um, but it didn't do it quite as well as what the Kiesel did. And then I tried to find a place for it in other types of music that I would play. And I was just like, I just have all these other guitars that kind of cover those bases. And, um, and that sometimes is a good sign that like, maybe you don't need that guitar anymore. Maybe you've outgrown that guitar or whatever that guitar was doing for you has been replaced by something that's going to be, uh, that's going to, it's going to do something else for you. Right. So, um, you know, I'll just leave you with, um, I really, I want you guys to, uh, you know, get the most out of whatever guitars that you guys decide to, to purchase or you get to play. And when something, and when something speaks to you, don't hesitate, try to get it. Um, if you, if you walk into a guitar store and you play, you know, once this whole COVID mess is over, uh, if you guys walk into a guitar store and, uh, you know, you play, you pick something up and it's, uh, <laughs> it's $200 or it's $2,000 and it, it comes in your hands and it feels like your guitar. Uh, and it feels like something is coming out of you that would otherwise not be coming out of you. That might be a guitar that you might be looking into buying. So, um, with that said, um, good luck and maybe I'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back to the live portion of today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am still your host and community developer, 
Doug Lilly, uh, wonderful to have you with us. Uh, thank you to Sam Schwartz uh, for that that discussion about when you might want a new guitar, when you might want when you might want to start thinking about looking for a new guitar. And before that, uh, we heard Ted uh, with some Interpol, some slow hands. Uh, right now, we are going to have a song pack giveaway. Uh, we're going to do five copies of the Rockin' Covers 2 song pack on Steam. So if you're in the chat right now, please listen to UB Jurassic for instructions on how you can win. Uh, actually, no, uh, we're no instructions. I think he's just going to pass them out. It's going to be first come, first served uh, because we're on YouTube now uh, and uh, we, we can't do raffles the way we used to. Still working that out. We're going to figure it out. But right now, uh, uh, UB Jurassic, that's Brian Turner, uh, community manager, is going to drop uh, five copies of the Rockin' Covers 2 song pack into the chat. First come, first served. Uh, on that pack, we have Joan Jett and the Black Hearts with Louie Louie, Nightwish with Over the Hills and Far Away, and Real Big Fish's cover of Take On Me. All three of these are covers, hence the name uh, of the pack. Uh, that pack came out uh, midway through 2019, so uh, however long ago that was, 10 years, six months, who can say? Uh, right now, we're going to hear once more from Ted, uh, or PC Gaming is Ted again. Uh, Ted's Rocksmith videos uh, here on YouTube. Uh, you can find him there. Uh, does gameplay videos as well as discussions uh, about songs or ideas from the Rocksmith Library. So please check that out. Give him a subscribe. Uh, here is Ted with some more post-punk, and we'll see you right after that. Now, one thing I like to do with my videos on my YouTube channel is raise awareness for the hidden songs we have in game. Everyone knows that Rocksmith has Foo Fighters, Queen, Iron Maiden and other massive artists, but there are often a lot of mix and variety packs which introduce these singles which can otherwise go unnoticed if you don't know what to search for. Like did you know we have Fountains of Wayne or Grand Funk Railroad or Buzzcocks? So I like to try and raise awareness for those songs that can be easily missed. This next song is one of those songs and it's What You Know by Two Door Cinema Club. Enjoy!
masterful performance. And welcome back uh, to uh, the, the close of this uh, first Rocksmith Developer Stream of 2021. Again, uh, very glad uh, you were all able to join us today. Uh, we do have uh, one more piece of business before we wrap up today's stream. Uh, I mentioned them a few times in the, in the chat. Uh, we do have uh, a brief announcement from Brian Turner, AKA UB Jurassic uh, Community Manager in the chat. Uh, here is Brian. Hey everyone, it's Brian Turner, Community Manager here on Rocksmith. Starting next week, I will no longer be Community Manager here on Rocksmith. I'll be moving on to a different set of responsibilities within Ubisoft as the Community Manager for the division. Working with this team and this community has easily been one of the most rewarding experiences of my career in the gaming industry. How friendly the community is, how absolutely talented the developers are, has truly been one of a kind and I'm going to remember that for the rest of my career. However, I also want to take this opportunity to introduce you to the new CM for Rocksmith, Baja Newell. Baja, take it away. Hey everyone, my name is Baja, or you can call me UB Dork, and I am super excited to be coming forward as the new community manager for the Rocksmith brand. I do want to take a couple of seconds before we get into anything to once again thank Brian for his hard work for everything he's done with the community, as well as wish him well with his next amazing adventure. Brian, I can assure you, you be drastically missed. And I do not regret that pun. <laughs> but I also wanted to let you guys know that I do plan on bringing the same energy that Brian has brought for you all time and time again, as well as serve you as a listener and as your voice in whatever way I can. I think that with this transition, we do have a chance to look at the Rocksmith Community Foundation and see where we can change for the better, where we can be more innovative for you all, and where we can be more creative. So please don't hesitate to tell me your thoughts. Um, any feedback is welcome feedback. It helps us grow and it helps us to change for the better. So please know that I am here for that and I'm here for you. A little bit about me is that I do have a music background. Um, I have played the violin for many years. However, I haven't picked it up in a long time. So actually coming to Rocksmith is a big hope for me that I'm gonna get that passion back for music, as well as learning new instrument as I have never played the guitar before, but that's the beauty of Rocksmith is that you get to learn with a like-minded community of people who are passionate about music and wanting to fulfill themselves in a new way with new talents and new skills. So I'm super excited to be learning about how to play a guitar with you all. And hopefully by this time next year, I'm teaching you guys new trip, new tips and tricks and you guys aren't teaching me. Um, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. I truly hope that you guys enjoy the rest of the stream and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye everyone. Every word I think they're uh, true. Uh, Brian Turner, uh, uh, I want to thank you for the, being able to work with you the past couple of years. It's been a, a, a true joy, uh, and I, I think that you've uh, you you did wonderful things with this wonderful Rocksmith community. Uh, so thank you for being a part of that. I'm I'm glad that uh, we were able to have this time together. Uh, Baja, welcome. Uh, very excited to be able to work with you soon. Uh, I believe she's hiding there in the chat right now. Uh, if you want to say hello. Go for it. Otherwise, we'll see you as UB Dork here uh, very soon. Um, so yeah, Brian, you will be missed. Baja, look, can't wait to start working with you. Um, we will see you back here uh, in two weeks. January 28th is our next Rocksmith developer stream. Uh, in the meantime, uh, one more thank you to Brian Turner, uh, not only for today's stream, for moderating, uh, getting those questions to me and handing out those, uh, those, those, those codes, but for the past uh, two plus years, two and a half years uh, of work on Rocksmith. Uh, want to thank Dan Amrick for being the voice in my head and uh, running the board for all this. Sam Schwartz for his content, for letting us know when you might want to consider picking up a new guitar. And of course, Shane Gann and Layla abdul Ralph uh, for the conversation about setting your musical goals for 2021. And thank you uh, everyone here in the chat uh, for being here, uh, for hanging out with us. Love talking to you. Uh, and we will see you very soon. Oh, how could I forget? Ted, Ted, one more thing. Ted, thank you so much. Uh, again, Aaron uh, <laughs> uh, R and I are jerk. Uh, Ted's Rocksmith videos here on YouTube. Uh, you can find him on Twitter, I believe. Uh, he's been in the chat. Lovely person, uh, great player. And uh, we will see you all very soon.
Goodbye.